have never had a deer in the headlights experience this crazy because I'm not really a fan of like rock stars, movie stars, people like that. I like politics. And I'm sitting there during that 70 second break and Matt Drudge rounds the corner over here. Uh, and it was just like total and complete deer in the headlights. And I'm still double taking here. And then he's hiding over there in the shadows right now. I'm not kidding. They're going to say this is another conspiracy theory. And uh, we got Anthony Gucciardi. Is Matt Drudge over there? He is over there. Come on, just for a second to give the national media a heart attack. Can you just walk over here behind the stage? They're not going to believe it. Now, nope, see, it's, 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 it's right around this way. I haven't had one photo in eight years. I know you haven't had one photo in eight years. All right, I'm going to turn the mic your way. They can do voice print. Is this Matt Drudge? Uh-oh. I know. Okay, it's made up. It's a stunt. April Fools came early. What, how many months early? Five months early? April Fools, folks, I, I fooled you. Well, am I supposed to go to rebroadcast now that you're here? Because I mean, I, you get to hang out with my crew and I'm on the air. This is like diabolical. Oh, my gosh. Anyways, no, seriously. Do you think folks are going to believe Matt Drudge was here? I don't even believe he's here. I didn't believe it. Only because it's like it was like such short notice. It was like, boom. I remember years ago. Well, anyways, I'm not going to get into it. This is this is crazy. All right. Well, I'm not going to be aggressive and turn the lights on over there and aim the document cam over there. But Matt Drudge came in, said hi to me, thought it was a three minute break and then went over there. I'm definitely going to have to uh, play a clip or something. Do we have one of those special reports coming back from the next break? All right. This is this is now entered complete twilight zone. Um, Hey, but we got a new article up on InfoWars. Obama arms ISIS militants, pushes gun control on very same day. Obama authorizes uh, resupplying Syrian opposition on the same day he demands gun control against American citizens. And, of course, I was covering this Breitbart article a lot that I missed. I miss stuff all the time. I mean, I, I knew they were doing this, but I didn't know they were actually d openly doing it. Obama administration and U.N. announced global police force to fight extremism in U.S., and then we've got all these callers that want to talk to me. You know, Matt has hosted the, the Drudge Report uh, uh, show for so long, but also Rush Limbaugh. So I, I would imagine he could come over here and actually host the show for us, except he's not really here. What if we put a microphone into the darkness coming out of the break and, and folks can do a voice print analysis to see if it's Matt Drudge? He's not going to do it? I'm telling you, this is so classically reclusive. I wish I could do that. He is back there right now. It's taken a lot of work to get to this point. I know it's taken a lot of work to get to this point. I, I admire you. Maybe I should become reclusive. Huh? He's a big guy. Uh, in good shape, too. I was like, man, who is that big guy? Who is that? I recognize that guy. Who's that with him? I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> what did I look like, Buckley, when he walked in? I mean, I literally was like, who is that? You are something else, man. God, I tell you, he's got a lot of, he's got a lot of class the way he pulls stuff off. I'm kind of the opposite, like a bull in a china shop, a loose cannon. Uh, anyways, I was already super wound up today. I've already had too many DNA forces today, and uh, this has now just pushed me over the edge. I need some Jack Daniels, Buckley, immediately. <laughs> I'm sure. I've, I've, I've not been drinking since last Thursday. I've been being a good boy. And uh, I've been being nice, but I tell you, I may have to. I, see, I, I, I don't have any, uh, what do you call them, tranquilizers. But I think I need a tranquilizer dart or something. All right, folks, we'll be right back. No, no, seriously, because I'm starstruck right now. This is crazy. And the way he did it is even worse. And then it's going to be even worse when they have, like, some major establishment White House-driven publication saying I made it all up. So we at least, well, we can't get a photo for Twitter. What are we going to do? The suspense is deafening. DrudgeReport.com, you can uh, read up there where this guy put stuff on his Facebook, the supposed shooter, uh, about how he just had so many pills he was on, psychotropics, lithium, uh, and other things, that he ended up just taking five at a time. So the question is, was he on meds? And the answer is, uh, does a bear, you know, do different things like jump rope in the woods? We'll be right back. All right, folks, Alex Jones here back live well into the third hour. I did not do this as a stunt. Neither did Matt Drudge. He is here. We got a hot mic over there. He wants to stay literally in the shadows behind a curtain. Uh, but this is the king of being able to push a story out and make it the number one story in the world. They even admit that in the New York Times that he has more readers on politics and news than Facebook, the New York Times, and the Washington Post, L.A. Times put together. 
He's got some of our stories uh, where the shooter himself said he was on a bunch of drugs. Uh, he's linked to that today. And that's the story they don't want out there, or the story where CNN took a mixed racial Christian hater and turned him into a right-wing white supremacist and turned him white. They don't want people knowing that, but Matt Drudge and his great crew can link to alternative stories, foreign stories, mainstream stories, photos, mug shots, and really just focus on what Matt Drudge thinks is interesting. And the public tends to agree with him that what he focuses in on is really catching the zeitgeist or the pulse of the people. So he might have 50 links every day where Facebook has 500 million, but he has more traffic. That is the true David versus Goliath story. And this is not scripted. I have no idea where I should go. Uh, Matt Drudge, I, I guess you're here for ACL, or why are you in Austin, Texas? <laughs> well, you were just talking about Facebook, and thanks again for having me here. Um, I'm not on Facebook. Um, I don't do the socials. I've got that little Twitter thing. Even that's kind of disgusting. You know, I've been doing the Internet as long as you've been doing this radio show, Alex, literally every day as you have literally every day, practically. I think you've taken a little more time off than I have, actually. Yes, I've kind of gone. And I can't say that about many people because you are a peer without peer. And I'll tell you, I was there before Facebook. I was there for before CNN.com. I was there before mostly all of them. I have a very clear perception what the Internet is in my mind. I'm free. I'm not defined by what they say the Internet is. Uh, meaning Goldman Sachs, meaning who they invest in for the latest startup, meaning the latest BuzzFeed or Salon or Gawker. All, well, Gawker's more independent. But there's a lot of corporate makeover of the Internet that I have not adapted to. Simply put, uh, I'm friends with some of them. When I go to New York, I make the Sixth Avenue rounds. But I am not a part of that system. I am a free thinker. I'm an American I'm very concerned with what's happening. So I just give it my all. I've learned how to take care of myself and detach from outcomes because otherwise you can't survive. And I don't know where you are on that topic. That's I first. just follow my instinct because they always tell us how to adapt to be successful, but really we're just adapting to their mindset to I be don't. their slaves. I don't. No, you don't. I have remained completely independent from all of them, all of them. I am not influenced by any of them. I need no traffic from Google. I don't care if I get one traffic refer referral from Google or Bing or Yahoo or any of these others. It's always been that way. Now, if you think of that setup, how rare that is, because everybody's so hungry for referrals, for likes, I don't need to be liked. I don't need to be liked at all. I don't care if there's a button right there at the top of Drudge saying like or dislike. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Doesn't mean anything. Now, I hope that you come. Doesn't mean you necessarily have to like what I have up there. Now, where I've had a lot of success is I'm getting people from both sides of the aisle. They've always said, oh, he's a right-wing gossip monger, mainly because of Lewinsky in those years, which, by the way, are back. Why aren't we seeing Hillary's lovers? Excuse me. Why aren't we seeing Hillary's lovers? It's a good question. Where's the cover-up on this? So many issues that are suppressed on a daily basis. So that's what I try to do every morning. Incredible. Well, it's amazing to have you here in Austin, Texas. And I tell you, you certainly know how to make an entrance. I'm in a 70-second break, and I turn around, and there's Matt Drudge just boom, <laughs> I tell you, I almost had a heart attack, a good one. <laughs> My cousin said he's never seen me look like that. Uh, what was the word, Buckley, you used? No, no, I was flabbergasted. I was flabbergasted. You used the word flabbergasted. Well, I, I tell you, this is like the biggest Christmas present early ever because I just admire true independence. And I got to tell you, Matt, and you know this with your crew, and Congress knows this, we wouldn't have won some of these gun battles, some of these uh, border battles, some of these energy battles, and we've lost some too, but we would have lost so many of them if it wasn't for the focal point. And even the White House and the Democrats admit, because I know you're saying you're nonpartisan. I mean, I would guess you're more of a libertarian. Correct me if I'm wrong. You're just a freedom guy. I can't be controlled. I cannot be controlled. There are no interests here but what I see as the world events, period. That is the truth of the situation. Well, they hate the fact that they can't control the agenda. The Pentagon has briefings with the 
head of PSYOPs, as you know, saying we've got to stop Drudge changing the subject and showing when we're lying. I mean, that's when you know. That's, I mean, that's crazy town when you get, what is it like? Is it surreal to think back to something you started back in the early 90s has now grown into this? Well, no, because it's been every day. So it's just like it's, it's happened so organically. It started with one reader. I don't know who that one reader was, but it started with one reader. I've never placed an ad anywhere, ever. This has all been a true organic reader to reader to reader to reader. Yes, I dabbled in the corporate with the Fox News show and the Clear Channel, sh uh, Clear Channel radio show for nine years. But even that, the website was on its own terms and remains so to this very minute. Well, you've only gotten bigger since uh, you stopped. Uh... Well, I don't know because this is another thing. W w the measurements that we have, this is another bogus thing. Yesterday they released on the APA wire. Twitter followers. Hillary is the queen of the Twitters with 4.9 million. They don't say how many are fake. They don't have say how many are. They droid. admit the first ladies is like 80 percent fake. Well, no, the AP did not do that, Alex. So this whole thing, this whole socials, these socials, you know, Beats One Music, which I'm obsessed with, which has been launched on Apple, uh, which is probably one of the best things they've done since Steve Jobs died. One radio station. Interesting. They don't know how many listeners they have. I heard some streams, they were down to 5,000 an hour. This whole social media stuff is bogus. Facebook, uh, we have 2 billion users. This is garbage. This is designed to demoralize the individual. I'll never have 2 billion followers. The internet is what you make of it. It's the same battle as it was in the beginning. I remember having this argument with Britt Hume once live on C-SPAN. He goes, oh, the internet's all UFOs and... Uh, all this crap. And I said, no, the internet is what you make of it. In the beginning, they were dismissing the internet. They were poo-pooing it. And isn't that good for us that, 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 that for so long they were in arrogant denial? And they seem like they still kind of are in arrogant denial. No. On, on now MSNBC. they make it over in their image. Now it's these endless, monotonous tweets. Meaningless. Meaningless. Uh, to me, it's a, just a lot of gnats. A lot of confusion. When the reality of the situation is life on Earth has not changed. We need facts. We need events. We need specifics on things. Not all this confusion. It's almost they made the Internet over in their image, these corporations. And I think they're failing, quite Skip frankly. the break. Skip the break. Oh, sorry, Matt. Go ahead. Uh, I had to interrupt. You say you think they're failing? I think they're failing to the point... This is a whole nother discussion on how sick are the American people right now. I've been saying they could put Hillary Clinton's brain in a jar in the Oval Office and she'd be elected. People are really sick. I think you know this deep in your soul, and this is why you get demoralized here on this very set. Yeah, I shouldn't. Yeah. People are sick. How they've got here, you've been done a wonderful arc over m almost decades now explaining why people are and have become so sick. That being said, people are willing to be made over in the image of these corporations. The reason there's so much anger online also is the, a, a newspaper like the Washington Post will leave a comment section. They don't care what you're saying. They don't care what you're thinking. That's why you get this anger that, oh, I, I have to be, uh, you know, I'm out here as a citizen and I'm operating on, in their playground. Make your own playground. The reason I'm here, Alex, is you've made your own playground. This is a figment of your imagination. The, and the Drudge Report is mine. It is a very simple thesis. You are what you dream you are and become. And I wish Americans would get out of the sickness and just become greater. And well, that's profound. I mean, because if we start creating our own maps, our own world, our own vision, then there's no way for these cultural tyrants to program us, and that's why they're pushing so hard to get more outrageous. I mean, is this the beginning of the end? And to operate in their playgrounds. So you become famous on YouTube. That's ridiculous. I'm not saying you. I'm saying the 13-year-old that just died that they're saying is the first YouTube star that died. You're playing in Google's Hell Pit. No, I agree, but I've make invaded all Make your own those. place. Make your own own the internet allows you to make your own dynamic your own universe why are you gravitating towards somebody else's universe and this is kind of again where drudge to me when i look at it right now is a correction to this group think that has oh i totally agree with there's what no you're saying. difference from any of these websites you go 
up and down, we talk about this. What's the difference between the websites, between a Slate or a Salon or a BuzzFeed or a HuffPo? What is the difference? There isn't any. And this is a travesty. It's almost like, it's almost like a weird conglomerate of groupthink that has developed in a dynamic era that should be vibrating. It should be vibrating, it should be controversial, but I guess it's fear. Uh, I, not everybody is cut from the same genetic background as you or I, Alex, of being brave and being able to stand up. You're on the camera, I'm not. You're more brave than I am. So this is the dynamic that I'm in. I would just like to wake people up. Stop operating in their playground. Stop it. Well, let me say this. I totally agree with you. I've tried. I couldn't pay for the bandwidth to put all of our videos out on our own platforms. Now we're doing that uh, at PrisonPlanet.tv and the Nightly News and putting ourselves you know, up on television to reach people because it's kind of like jacking into the Matrix going into their playground. I try to then claw them over here to see what we're trying to do, what you're trying to do. But I totally agree with you. The answer is for all of us to create our own systems, our own ideas, because vibrant independent ideas will trump this corporate plastic borg this 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 brainwashing they're trying to push i mean banning father and mother uh banning you know the word husband and wife i mean that's so cultic that if i'd have been told 10 years ago they were going to ban words like that i wouldn't have believed it they do it with straight faces I mean, has the left, and, and of course the controlled right as well, but have they gone collectively insane on, on a control freak bent, well, or, or I, I would, is there a strategy? I would also ad advise people to not waste their time on this. I had a Supreme Court justice tell me to my face, it's over for me. I said, Matt, it's over for you. They've got the votes now to enforce copyright law. You're out of there. They're going to make it so headlines you can't even use headlines. To have a Supreme Court justice say that to my face, that it's over. They've got the votes, which means time is limited. Time is not forever. How many more moons and sunrises will you see in your life uh, rise and fall? There's not that many. It's a small amount. So for people to be saying with this attitude, oh, I'll get on with my life and my greatness sometime. No. No, you can't. We're being enslaved now, and, and that's it. Under the TPP, they admit you can't put a headline to the New York Times. You're sending massive traffic to them. They're claiming you're taking their words. This is insane. And you had the Justice Stephen Breyer said, we need to look at a global law now. Remember just recently he getting it lined up, up with it. So they're getting ready for these decisions to come. You thought Obamacare was shocking. You thought some of these other decisions were shocking. Wait until these copyright laws work their way up and the Supreme Court decides you cannot have a website with news headlines linking across the board. Then that will end for me. Fine. I've had a hell of a run. It's 20 years next year or 20 years about now. Hell of a run. I couldn't, I couldn't have gone any further. Farther. I feel completely I have gone as far out of the galaxy as I can on this. I still want to stay out here, but I've gone pretty damn far for what one individual can do in this culture. But I'm talking about the future. So I don't know why they've been successful in pushing everybody into these little ghettos of these Facebooks and these tweets and uh, these Instagrams, these Instas. This is ghetto. This is ghetto. This is corporate. They're taking your, they're taking your energy. They're taking your energy and you're getting nothing in return. Nothing. They're dumbing the language down. Twitter's designed to reduce the language directly out of 1984. It's Ingsoc. Right. Ultimately, it's boring and the kids are always off to something new, except for the something new is owned by the same freaking company or financed by the same banking system. So I'm here to say, and this is the reason why I came to see you, Alex, is you are one of the very few who are operating under this, this, under this theory to be an independent American in a, as, in a big way. If your calling's media, if your calling is media, fine. If your calling is sports, whatever it is, but you've got to be the greatest you can be now, now, before this country is so completely That's altered. Right. And we're left with Hillary's brain in the Oval Office in a jar because that's what we're getting. She's old and she's sick. She's not a contender. They're making her a contender with these propped up Saturday Night Live things. It's like a head on a stick. And then on the Today Show with the gun three, a head on a stick. She is not a viable, vibrant leader for this country of 300, including the illegals, 380 million Americans. So the media is trying to 
put us to sleep. You're not letting them, Alex. Let me I'm ask you this question, Matt. Yeah. Is the establishment, which we know is diverse, but there's different conglomerates, is it panicking? Is it trying to push everything through right now because it knows people are waking up? Or is it just completely arrogant and thinks it's invincible? It's trying to consolidate control, yes, and there is a sense of panic about it. Uh, you look at a, 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 a Telemundo or a Univision, they're kind of panicked. You look at some of these interviews that are, are happening this election cycle where Trump comes along, says a few things, just a few things, and soars to the top of the list. That's profound. Imagine if we actually had a good selection of candidates who were saying a lot, and I know Cruz and Rand and all the rest. However, you've got to be dynamic in this atmosphere, and it's a media country. You've got to be dynamic in media. That's the only thing that's going to work. So I am left with thinking there's not a lot of time to be your greatest self, especially online, because I don't, if it continues to get consolidated to this degree, and then we're moving into the robots, which you're so profound on, and it's going to get really ugly really fast. There's already automated news sites, Google News, hello anybody. They actually, the, the idiots reading that crap think there is actually a human there. There is no human there. You are being programmed to being automated, even up to your news. And Apple News, I don't know what that's about. That was also creepy. A same corporate glaze over everything. I don't see the world that way. I live in a world that's free, colorful, vibrant, takes chances, bold, stands up to power. Um, and that's where I've made my success. Well, uh, very eloquently said. I mean, really, if we don't affect the, the battle space, if we don't get involved in free speech now, that's all you, the listeners, all the Drudge fans, fans of freedom, no matter what color you are, no matter what political bent, we're going to lose everything. We know what totalitarian looks like. We know what oppression looks like we know what the dumb culture of of totalitarianism smells like this is it it's happening now and the future of the world is being decided so get out there make your own sites take action because matt you say you'll just go away if they do this we all know we're going to fight it we know they can't enforce it because if they can say that you can't even put a link up to a news site then that ends free speech and basic communication i mean i know they got the democrats out openly saying we need to bring in the fairness doctrine to the internet because of Matt Drudge, because you, quote, affect elections. Well, you're an American citizen that pays taxes, and you're allowed to be pro-gun. Well, but if they get enough sick people to elect it, the demographics will take care of themselves. We had a story this morning that they're finally releasing an artist in Cuba who painted Raul and, Ka and uh, Fidel as a pig, jailed without trial for 18 months. Look at Germany where they're arresting people that criticize open borders. Look, you've been... So it's already happening. I, I'm just warning this country that, yes, don't get into this false sense that you are an individual when you're on Facebook. No, you're not. You're a pawn in their scheme. Stay there. we got to come right back for yeah. a few more minutes and say bye. This is incredible. Well, I tell you, a lot of energy entered the building, and there's already a lot of energy in this building. Uh, a lot of smiles with Matt Drudge here. A Don, I guess, went to the door... And uh, we, we say don't let strangers in, but it was no stranger. Uh, Matt Drudge here in studio with us. And characteristically, uh, very uh, kind of like you know, Peter Pan, hard to, hard to catch, hard to find, moves quick. He is right over there in the dark uh, with a handheld microphone. And, of course, the conspiracy theories will begin. This isn't really Matt Drudge, but people can tell it is Matt Drudge. I've seen a lot of his speeches, heard him pop in on shows here and there. And it's always eloquent, always thought-provoking. This is particularly thought-provoking and will be a big newsmaker. They will attempt to control reality and say, how dare Matt Drudge hang out with that heretic Alex Jones? And we're always hearing uh, the last six, seven years that Matt Drudge is over, Matt Drudge doesn't exist, but then they have to admit Matt Drudge is bigger than ever. So this attempt to control reality or control who talks to who by these totalitarians that masquerade as liberals, I don't think is working. And now with Boehner being forced out, I think it shows the rumblings of the Tea Party beneath the surface. So, Matt, before you uh, leave us, and I really appreciate your time. Uh, oh, and by the way, the presidential candidates, that's exactly what you're saying, the rumblings. Look at anybody who has any form of success in the polls is because they rumble. Uh, where it's going to end up, I don't know. I'm very pessimistic. I'm very pessimistic on this race because I'm just not so sure it's not going to end up with the dreaded brain in the, in the jar in the Oval Office, once known as Hillary Clinton, who is hypothyroid. Anybody who is 70 years old who's hypothyroid, you do not elect president. 
ladies and gentlemen. You don't do it. Now, they'll say, well, it has to be who her VP is, whether it's the Castro from San Antonio or the other Castro from San Antonio or the other Castro from San Antonio, whoever it's going to be. I, I'm just shaking now after seeing NBC giving her endless hours of airtime over the past 72 hours that Hillary's back and she's back for real. Now, what that means to you or me, what it means to me, I've got a long history with these people. They're ugly. They play dirty. They sued me for $30 million last time around with the approval of the president, announced by the press secretary of the White House, a civil action. These people, and they didn't have the NSA then. They had Echelon. They had all these other things you were talking about even then. Hillary Clinton with the NSA, good luck if you dissent. Good luck if you dissent. Snowden, I'll switch places with you. You can come over here in rotten hell because that's what it's going to be. So I'm very concerned with the lay of the land, but the rumblings you're talking about that we've seen a Trump, that we've seen a Carly, that do we see in a Sanders? Yeah, maybe. Also old. Old. Can the Democrats find anybody under the age of 70? What is this oldness in a vibrant country that needs to go forward to a new century? So I don't know. I, I'm hoping for surprises. I'm hoping for some jolts. We'll have to see. On a few other subjects, and I appreciate your time. I'll quit bugging you. Uh, there is so much going on in the world. Obama now is talking about, well, Australia had a good plan. We may have to do that. That's clearly talking about gun confiscation. Now Hillary's doing it. CNN has pundits just saying, let's just take them. Do these people realize that this is the line in the sand at the Alamo? If they really come out in a frontal assault on guns, it means I think they're trying to start a civil war it just seems like insanity. I mean, they may tr think that they're Stalin or something. Well, because they're all armed themselves, or they all have that security around them themselves. They don't have to worry about. I challenge Hillary, take away your Secret Service. Take it away now. Take away your Secret Service. Dismiss them. Have no security around you. Have no guns around you, Hillary. I dare you. I dare you. Obama, same thing. Drop your guns, Obama. Take your Secret Service away, Obama. Take it all away. Leave the White House unguarded, Obama. Let everybody know there's no guns on the White House grounds, Obama. You know what would happen in 30 seconds? Both of those people would no longer be on planet Earth. So they're asking us to drop our guns and to drop our security measures or, or what? So this thing is very real, and I don't see how it's being taken seriously except for the sick voter. You can't underestimate the sickness of the American people right now. They're really sick. And that's to me. I'm more angry at the sick Americans than I am at Obama or Hillary. I'm really angry at the sick Americans. Matt Drudge, I used to listen to your radio show almost every Sunday, but I got to tell you, you are even more on fire than you were then. And I know you're smart, you know, not to be, you know, you know too available because uh, – Distance makes the heart grow fond. And I tell you, but it would be great if even once a week you did like an hour podcast or something, or maybe once a month with these thoughts. Because let me tell you, this is some really good radio, and I'm enjoying it, and I know the audience is. I mean, Matt Drudge is kind of co-hosting the Alex Jones show right now. This is crazy. <laughs> well, maybe I'll join Facebook. Oh, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> no, well, I can't. I, I realize that just my, my personality is I've got to stay focused I can't be too. I can't be too distracted. You no, know, no. Your advice to me was right. You know, like a year ago, that don't try to do too much. I mean, you're well, right. Through I have... Paul Joseph Watson, I told him, watch out for this. This, you know, it's it's a, it's a larger topic. But at my height of media availability, I was doing the website, the TV show, and the radio show at the same time, as you are doing now, as you are doing now. Uh, mine was with the corporations, Clear Channel, News Corp, and then the Drudge Report. But still, I felt just myself, it, it, I, I felt it was just more powerful to go to the web, plus not to necessarily be playing in their playground. Because the power of the individual, as you represent sitting there right now, is powerful to the heart. I said to Paul Joseph Watson when I saw him in London, which you just referred to a year ago, you're a romantic figure, Alex, in Americana. <laughs> it's, ro it's romantic what you do here every day. It just is. This is romance because you're an American standing up, tough, facing these headwinds. Wow, are they blowing. But you're there. And, there, there's, and you're not alone. 
Limbaugh, Savage, Hannity, Levin. There's a lot of people on the airwaves who are as brave. They are brave. And they are living it. I've met them all. I'm friends with them all. They are also operating against the grain in an, an America that needs to go back to that. Well, the system's tried to put some of them in jail. I mean, I know a lot of those folks don't talk about the stuff that goes on behind the scenes. I don't either. But, uh, you know, these people play hardball. And, and, and some folks can say who are libertarians. Well, those folks don't sound libertarian enough to me. It doesn't matter. The globalists, the Democrats, the, the collectivists hate anybody who's conservative, anybody who believes in the individual. And the fact is, those people promote individualism, nationalism, and that's why they've got to be eradicated. Uh, what a horrible world if the system is successful. Matt Drudge, in your gut, in your heart, do you think that humanity is going to be successful and make it the next hundred years? Oh, the hundred years? Well, of course, unless Mother Nature decides. You know, I'm a big fan of letting Mother Nature decide some of this, too. You know, we can't control a lot of this. There is a law to the universe. There just is. There's just a law to the universe. We could have the San Andreas rip tonight. We had nothing to do with that. We could have had that super hurricane that, look what they did to South Carolina, two or 300 miles offshore. Imagine if a Category 5 eye wall went right up the Chesapeake Bay. They could say, well, mankind did that. No, Mother Nature decides. So will we survive? I'm sure we will. What Will we be... Uh, not allowed to speak as we are today. Well, we'll have it documented that we were allowed to speak that way once. So I, I don't know. Am I optimistic for myself personally? Yes, I'm strong. There's not much they can do. They could laser beam me. They could drone me. They can plutonium me. They could do whatever they wanted, but spiritually I'm set. I've already got it. So they can't do much. I just wish there was more media that was trailblazing and independent and this to me is a, is a big danger right now in this setup is you've got these corporations like the New York Times and the Amazon now with the Washington Post and Time Warner and all of them seem to be the same. This is what's frightening. And there's so much news in the course of the day. And the reason I think the Drudge Report has is interesting every morning is it's not exactly the same as you would see elsewhere. And that's because I'm not involved with other people. I'm looking at the world through my eyes and that's what you're seeing with bravery and with the ability to do it because uh, the ability to do it, what you've created here with one listener one day that went to 10 listeners that went to 50 to now your millions was organically grown. And that's kind of how earth uh, proceeds. And it usually takes time. You're absolutely right. Uh, looking at the open announcements by the Pope for world government, carbon taxes, looking for Obama, announcing similar things. They've gone from denying this planetary th systems being set up to now admitting it. We've got all these key meetings, TPP being agreed on uh, just a few days ago. How is that affecting the people that were brainwashed and told none of this was happening? How are they going to respond now when all of this starts coming to fruition? I've been traveling a lot and I'm seeing a lot of desperation everywhere, a lot of sad desperation. I was just in an airport and even down to this, a woman selling Southwest Airlines credit cards, standing like a robot. Have you signed up yet? Are you a member of the club? It was tragic. This is a mature woman with a beautiful face and life. And I'm like, how did she get there? What has happened to this culture that she's now standing as a robot like this? They are sucking our ability to make uh, uh, an, an income that is compatible with what you need to. So I'm getting a little frightened as I travel. On the other side of it, when I go to New York and I see some of the billionaires, it's the other side, endless. You know, they're fighting over pieces of artwork. It's, it's gotten to the point where the have and the have-nots here is breaking. So I And it's the billionaires that are mainly funding the whole leftist redistribution movement because they end up getting the money in corporate welfare and insider deals. It's so sick. I, I, I watched a great film. I don't know if you've seen it yet, but it's uh, The Best of Enemies about Gore Vidal and William F. Buckley. Have you seen that yet? No. You've got to see it. Mm -hmm. it and it shows Gore Vidal arguing, saying the answer Oh, and by the way, why are we not allowed to have a Gore Vidal, William Buckley anymore in the media scene? Do you see who they hire? Do you see who's hired for the shows? How dull they are? Yes. Dull. Dull as dishwater. They want you to tune out of politics and in entertainment. Yes, but they make it. Where are the flamboyant characters? This is what America desperately needs right now. Flamboyant intellectual characters who can cut different ways. 
uh, and that's just what I'm missing. I'm, I've been fortunate enough to meet some of the greats of this generation, and I've got to tell you, they are there. It's just they are suppressed and hidden, and they're not hired the way Gore Vidal and Buckley were back a previous generation. They were not afraid of ideas. This generation is frightened of ideas, or at least it's being suppressed. Let's throw in in the few minutes we have left. We're about to go to break, and I know you've given us more time than you even said you would. Matt Drudge is our guest, DrudgeReport.com, obviously in studio here in Austin, Texas, visiting a surprise visit, one of the best ever. That's better than the surprise birthday parties I've had. Shifting gears, I don't think that it's Putin's this great angel or this wonderful, perfect person, but our foreign policy is so corrupt, so deceptive, it makes him look good, and nobody's going to back al-Qaeda. I talked about this last Thursday and Friday, and I'll find the article, and we'll put it in this video later and put it out as a report, but it was, it was Reuters reporting that the White House is angry that um, these airstrikes by the Russians have hit the moderates, al-Nusra, which is al-Qaeda in Syria. And then it just went on, and they're telling him to stop doing it, and he didn't hit ISIS. But then Putin pointed out, no, that's the bosses of ISIS. That's just their fighters. It's the same group, which is true. But it's Twilight Zone. I can't even believe I'm reading Reuters, who has writers with a straight face that will just sit there and write articles about how al-Qaeda is moderate and not bad, and then we criticize Russia for bombing them when they're attacking Russian interest. It's just so bizarre it seems like that Karl Rove uh, quote where he said, we control reality. I don't think Obama and these guys really control reality. And now we've got John McCain saying, let's go ahead and end Zbigniew Brzezinski and have war with Russia. Let's go ahead and attack the Russian aircraft. I mean, it's crazy town. What do you say to that? Well, I'll, I'll say this. We never even heard of ISIS until recently. And I remember when that name first started coming up. Do you know it was designed to be confused with Daryl Issa? No, I didn't Did know you that. know that's what it was? Because Daryl Issa was the enemy at the time of this administration. You know, there would have been a time Obama could have been impeached. And I'm thinking of the IRS scandal, most likely. That would have been the one. You get the depositions going. You get the president under oath. You follow the chain. Obama, most likely, would have been impeached. Boehner decided, we're not going there. We're not going to have those cities burn. We're not going to do it. We're not going to impeach Obama. Uh, and so I felt Daryl Issa... That's his name, right? Because I'm getting all ISIL, ISA, ISA, Daryl yes. ISA. I think they were, they came up with the name ISIS to be confused with Daryl ISA. I'm really being honest with you. I remember when the first time Christiane Amanpour sputtered out this word ISIS. I'm thinking, where did she get that one? You know, these words are creative. These events are creative. Now we act like, oh, ISIS has been around for 20 or 30 years. Says who? It's been around a year and a half. Yeah designed to confuse and then the president going it's not even isis it's isil or ice or isil or is this is dr seuss this is madness so well, I, i'm glad military... you're able to follow any of it because when i sit down and look at the news i'm not able to follow the bouncing ball is putin here is obama here where does this one go where i can't follow can you put the pieces together i'm glad you can because i can't Wow. Well, we're going to break here in about a minute and a half, and then I'm going to come back and play a special report. They're going to go into the fourth hour, being hosted by one of our co-hosts today. But, Matt, in the two minutes we've got left, it's amazing to have you here. What else do you think is front and center in the universe? In the last two minutes here, what do you want to say uh, to the audience and to the dinosaur media uh, that is going to uh, gleefully try to edit this and chop this up uh, and, I guess, use it for their funeral pyre? Well, they're welcome to. Again, they've got no control over the situation. None. No control. No control over me, sorry. Zero. I wanted to th congratulate you. You one of the, and people don't really talk about this. You are one of the first to stream 24 hours a day. And I think the reason I was drawn into InfoWars was because of this streaming. Uh, this is a profound break that you did to allow the audience to hear you at any time, to make it available at any time from anywhere, looping, looping, looping until the next broadcast. This is a profound thing you did. I don't think that's recognized enough in the industry. I'm just talking shop, top, shop talk here for a second. That was big because what you're seeing with the AM dial now, and I'm not besmirching any stations that are carrying this right now, but some of these ratings are frightening. Some of these ratings in these major cities are frightening. I'm talking about half the listeners generally overall for every uh, talk host. Some of them are down a half, a half in one year. Something is going on, but you broke through with this 24-hour looping, always available, 
on my happiest nights, I'm sitting here and I'm listening to you from wherever I am in the world. Looping. Getting it, getting it, getting it. And the guests. This is a profound shift. Available anytime from anywhere. Well, that was, that was like, you, Alex. That, that was, was like one. 12 years ago. I, I said, why do we just send the stream out once uh, and, and then wait for a podcast to come up before they even called it podcast, which is an MP3? So organically again. Yet again, another organically grown decision that changed the media landscape. Well, sure, and I said, why not just have, I don't want to just have, because I was one of the first, people were doing this 20 years ago, Limbaugh was probably the first, with a little, you know, pod cam, took a photo every minute or something. I said, why don't we just put cameras in here so I can show people articles, show them photos, show them books, and even show them video clips, and then we'll start streaming it. And, and by the way, Limbaugh was genius for doing that because he bypassed broadcast. He didn't have to hook up with a Fox or a CNN to show him in real time. He was able to bypass that. And I think there was some cams for radio shows before that. Sure. But he did it on the larger scale. But what you did by breaking the mold, by breaking the mold, whatever you said that day, like, why don't we loop it? I can't tell you how that's changed. Well, and also, I, would, I would say the majority of your listeners are, have, and will discover you through the looping and the broadcast, because now we can drive around and listen to you without the streaming, even though it seems like the streaming is what, what the, where things are going. I got to say, when you broke the egg there, when you cracked the egg, that was a big one. That was a Stanley Kubrick moment of the bone going up, what you did with that one. So that was well, a big Well, I don't one. think it's as big as the bones you've been throwing up that turn into the spaceships, but I tell you, it's amazing to just have the diverse audience that tunes in to hear me babble Speak of the devil, like people like Stanley Kubrick's daughter and folks that have popped up too. And you're like, you check it out and go, well, this is really Stanley Kubrick's daughter that helped make some of his films. It just blows oh, and your by mind. by the way, if Stanley Kubrick was alive, can you imagine? Can you imagine where he would have gone? He would have done some great work. Oh. We're missing the Hollywood push too. Where's the greatness coming out of Hollywood? They want it dumbed down. I've talked to top enough Hollywood. Of the, enough of the Martian crap. Tell us something, telling something big and real and profound as Kubrick would have on a human level, on a human level. Well, I'm not allowed to say what I was told about Kubrick, but let me say, it was obvious from his films, he would he was be on board with us. He was You know, Spielberg keeps going back to World War II. I mean, enough already. Let's <laughs> let's get focused. I look at a PT Anderson and I don't know it's kind of gone into a marijuana cloud for me. Where are the artists who are challenging this generation like Kubrick did? So that's another topic separately. But anyway. Well, we're going to break in one minute. We're going to hear John Bounds report, come back and, and who's hosting the fourth hour today? I'm so Thunderstruck that I, uh, David Knight's got a bunch coming up. And obviously, we need to get clips of this epic interview, play those, and put those out on InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. And Matt, how, how fast do you think? Here's what's crazy. Five years ago, I cared if mainstream media wrote stories against us, or I cared if I was on Nightline or something. You've been in more big stuff than I have. Now it doesn't even do anything when I'm on those shows. That's why I know that they don't mean anything. And so we should end with this. You were the guy who tweeted. Uh, at least from what I saw, at Piers Morgan three years ago, or two and a half years ago, to say, have Alex Jones on, debate him. Matchmaker, yeah, behind the scenes, people don't know this about me, I'm a matchmaker behind the scenes, that I've had the ability to make some deals happen and do some things behind the scenes. Now, I've never met Piers Morgan, but I do believe that tweet that day did lead to that. You're right. Well, no, they told me in his office, they said, what do you think of Matt Drudge's idea because they got my cell phone number and called me because CNN had it, and I said... Which ended up being the most dramatic moment on CNN in a generation. So, they admit that. They have votes and say that. That's why they need to hire people away from 6th Avenue just to look at the scene. I remember once saying to Charlie Rose, why, why aren't you have more conservatives on it? And he says, who? And, I, you know, there's a whole list of them. Why are they limiting themselves? Because you would say it's a, you know, it's a contrived plan to limit but I still think to make provocative programming, you've got to have different points of view, a la the Buckley and uh, Vidal, uh, Gore Vidal. Where is that in this culture? It's missing. I get it from InfoWars. Uh, I get it from other places, too, mainly talk radio. Talk radio seems to be the driving force of this culture, at least in uh, spoken word. Uh, I'm not getting it from uh, television that much. I'm just not. Uh, where are the intriguing television shows? I mean, you could say Homeland. You can say some of these others. Okay, yes, but where are the real dynamic things that are pushing? Where well, let's expand on that. Uh, Piers Morgan had a ratings boost of about 30%, 40% for two weeks after that. Then it went down, steadily declined, and they got rid of him. CNN knows that if they put my commentary on or your commentary or others, 
tens of millions would tune in to watch it. They know that. They have to control the narrative because it's an agenda, even if it's self-defeating and destroying them. So where do you think that ends up going, them attempting to censor us? Well, it all depends if the sick Americans w get, get unsick. That's all. That's all you just have to do. Because if you get well, if you get well, you're not that interested in what Anderson Cooper is saying about things. You're just not. I'm sorry. Incredible. I don't mean to be insulting. If you're sick, you find comfort in that. I don't what are your final words? <laughs> what do you mean final words? These are the last words ever spoken on earth. Is these, these are the final words? Yes, George Washington says, tis well. Uh, well, again, I just wanted to come to congratulate you from building organically from the ground up. Thank you. Uh, a, a media that is not only American, it's just Western. It's not even Western, it's just freedom. I can imagine somebody right now listening to us who's sitting in a prison cell somewhere, somewhere awful, thinking about freedom. So congratulations to you. I have more power to you. Take care of yourself because, uh, you know, you're the vehicle too. <laughs> Alert the public to Obama's blatant abuse of power. Defend the Second Amendment with our top seller Come and Take It t-shirts. And look at that. Women's cut tank tops and t-shirts now available. Nice hat. Plus the Don't Tread on Me flag. And now you can become a micro distributor of the InfoWars magazine. Plus get your own copy delivered right to your door each and every month. So join the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com.